So you're looking into getting a teardrop trailer for camping. Well, I did just that. It's a minimalist style life and it is very fun. Here are my adventures. Well, hello. Uh, this is, uh, this is Tommy's Holiday. And um, we're in the little guy camper. Just uh, got here to Vermillion up at Tom, Lake Thomas Edison. And uh, we're having a thunderstorm right now. So not only did it, uh, did it kick our butts getting in here for 20 something miles on this uh, jeeping type road, uh, I tore up a little bit of the refrigerator and uh, my battery that knocked around a little bit. So uh, just uh, in here, uh, kind of having a cold one right now. Just uh, just chilling while it's still raining outside. So anyway, it's an experience. It's an adventure. That first test trip taught me a lot. Now time to fix the battery compartment with a better battery holder. Also verify the electrical system works with the new battery. Thanks dad. I also replaced all the water system plastic tubing. I also realized that a sturdy handle for the stove was needed, so I replaced it. Welcome to Tommy's Teardrop Adventure Number 2 in Camp Verde, Arizona, where I met up with a couple of friends at Distant Drums RV Park for some fun and exploring the Verde Valley. I am here at the Fort Verde Historic State Park in Camp Verde. Fort Verde was in operation in the Arizona Territory from 1865 to 1891. The Fort Verde Museum was a good exhibit and debunked the Hollywood fiction on the Wild West. You will see photos and history about the Navajo Scouts and the 10th Cavalry Division and their leader. Although not much of Fort Verde is left, there are a few buildings on Officer's Row that we can take a stroll through. When visiting the Arizona wine country in the Verde Valley, you must stop into the Southwest Wine Center at Yavapai College and get a feel for the beautiful wines of this region. Ask for Jill if you need any advice on planning your winery adventure in the Verde Valley. In the Verde Valley, there are three Native American National Monument sites. Check them out. They're beautiful.
We're walking down into Montezuma's well. Onto the Verde Canyon Railroad. <laughs> All aboard. We were thinking about that and then we decided. This railroad line was built in 1912 to serve the copper mining operations in Jerome. During the 20-mile train ride to Perkinsville Station, where steam engines would take on water, we travel along the Verde River and through the canyon for beautiful views. In the 1960s, a few scenes from the classic Western film, How the West Was Won, was filmed here. George Pappard, Debbie Reynolds, and Eli Walsh were featured at the depot. We're at the Perkinsville station and it's time to change direction. The Verde Canyon Railroad engines number 1510 and number 1512 were originally built in 1953 for the Alaska Railroad. taking the Little Horse Trail today. It's about five and a half miles out and back. Um, it intersects with the Broken Arrow Trail where you'll see Jeeps and everything camped upon the rock, checking out the valley below. We came upon this dry creek bed uh, that is just absolutely beautiful. During the winter, it, it would make one great waterfall so at the end of Little Horse Trail, we're up here, and it's also the end of Broken Arrow Trail, which is where all the Jeeps end up.
main features include Thunder Mountain, Chimney Rock, and Sugarloaf. After a fun day of hiking, stop in at Rotten Johnny's Pizza. This was a great week in the Verde Valley. Wine tasting, hiking, a train ride, and having a wonderful time with some friends. Like and subscribe for more fun adventures.